Hi, I'm Amy Shannon, and this is another episode of Expose Mobility Access to uh, Mobility Impaired Access Denial. Um, and this one is um, kind of about the purpose of why I am doing all of this. I mean, there's a reason why I'm doing all these things because I believe that change needs to be made. Um, and it, it needs to be made because people, for one, they're living longer. There are a lot of disabled persons out there, um, some with mobility issues, and that should not stop someone from being able to do what they want or what they need to do. Um, so a while back, I um, actually, a couple episodes prior, I had written um, some emails to some government officials and I have received, and as of this date, which is September 1st, as of this recording, I have received two responses and I talked about, I read those and I talked about them on that particular um, episode. Um, I had uh, written emails through like the comments section on their these uh, government websites um, and I either got like an automatic reply or I received nothing. Just emails saying, oh yeah, you signed up for our website, um, which I don't mind because I like to know what's going on. Um, so what I decided to do is uh, write actual letters and mail them directly to the addresses that I found on their website. Um, and what I'm going to do is, uh, this one is kind of, I read a template of a letter that I created. This one is specific for government officials. Uh, I have uh, been doing some research of um, in my area, like chain businesses. Uh, also, once I start feeling better and go can get out more, I'm still suffering from pneumonia. Um, which may take a couple of weeks to clear up, according to my doctor. Um, but once I feel well enough to go out there, there's uh, more sidewalks to explore, more doors to look at, more parking gone wrong type of situations. Um, I've been putting up photos uh, of my journeys, of, like I do videos of the journey. And I also have, um, I have my Facebook page now and I've been uploading uh, photographs that I've taken on my journey. So um, that is something that you might want to check out. And the link to the Facebook page is on this particular YouTube channel. So you can see it like on the home page of my YouTube channel. This is also my personal YouTube channel. And this is my videos that we use in in a place, um, use what you have. So, um, and if you like what you see, please like the videos, please share, and please subscribe. Uh, to me, it's it's about getting the word out and maybe um, getting some support. So, uh, I have in hand uh, three letters that I am going to um, put out in the mail tomorrow. You know, it's Labor Day, I'm still gonna go downstairs and mail it. Um, one is to Senator Kirsten Gillibrand of New York State, I live in New York State, uh, Senator Chuck Schumer, and the Honorable Kathy Hopeful, who is the government of New York State. With all of the letters basically say the same thing, um, and if I get replies to any of those letters, then I will do another uh, video and include those responses. Um, I, as I mentioned, I'm doing research in my uh, local businesses and checking out their accessibility and learning more and more about um, 
you know, what is required by law, um, such as um, the number of handicap or mobility accessible parking spaces as compared to um, how many is required. Um, and according to a report I read, and it's, excuse me, that it is worded as one handicap stall for every 20 stalls. And the stall refers to the actual parking spot. Parking spots, you know, cars are only that would be so wide and this or extra wide or whatever. So parking spots are standard parking spaces. Um, so, and with those, they need to have a sign not lying on the ground. Uh, there's also, they need to have outlined on the ground. Um, and that's blue with the, you can notice the you can get sign. Some have um, varying designs of that, but um, they have the, that sign and painted. And when you see that there is an area painted in blue and it has stripes, blue stripes, that is not a handicapped parking spot. That is how you want to drive your car, depending on who is the one that is in the wheelchair or using a walker um, on the side they need to get out. It's not always very simple. If you're the driver, you have to put it in sometimes. Um, or you can park on the opposite side so you can get out in that space. It doesn't always, um, if it's full, sometimes you have no choice. Sometimes you end up parking a little bit on it, over a little bit. That way, because you have to get in and out of the wheelchair for whatever reason, you are not comfortable back. So that's just more of that stuff to come, people parking illegally or incorrectly in those particular spots. Uh, when it says van accessible, it means that you could have a medical van or a van that has some kind of lift um, because it has that space. It does not mean that it is only for a van unless it says that some signs are specific, they have specific spot that are specific for like van transportation, when you can see the lift, whatever. So that's something different. Um, but to move forward with this episode, this is what I'm going to just basically show you and read to you the letter that I have sent um, the three people I mentioned before, Governor Hochul, um, Senators Chuck Schumer and Kirsten Gillibrand. Um, they're just some of people that I will be reaching out to in the government. I have already, and I received an email from um, Senator Jim Tedesco. I received a nice email from him and um, the town supervisor of Malta, Cynthia Young, gave me information about some plans for revitalizing and improving the town of Malta, which is where I live. Uh, so, very, uh, I was glad to, uh, you know, I don't know who writes their emails, but obviously they actually read my letter. So, hopefully, we'll get more. And without businesses, and um, once I get some letters written, I may just submit a couple to the news. I try to get some letters in, letters to the editor about, you know, my mission. And um, they have yet to be published. I send them to the Daily Gazette and Saratogian, and I check every day, and they have not been So I'm just going to continue what I'm doing. So, uh, here is to share the screen. Yep. 
And so, this part because God, I saved it with that bit. All right. So, this is headline that I, heading that I created for this. And this, these letters were sent, as I mentioned, to the governor um, and to the two senators. Hello, my name is Amy Shannon. Most of my life, I have been able to walk on my own without issues. Well, I was a pigeon toad. I was pigeon toed as a child. But that didn't stop me from running around or having my grandmother help me train my feet to walk straighter. More to the point, in 2005, my husband at the time tried to kill me and caused several traumatic impact injuries, resulting in daily chronic migraines, sometimes with aura and sometimes without aura. Since that time, I've experienced some regression in my brain, which affects my memory, and also how my brain sends signals to the nerves in my body, along with other parts of my brain. I also, I was finally eligible for SSI and SSD after many years of reapplying and appealing. Once I had hand trauma, once I had at least a year of hand traumas, tremors my hand eventually spread to my legs, causing spasms and twitches, which caused me to fall. When I had pain in my hands, I was eventually sent to a rheumatologist and diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. The nurse practitioner that I see said it was still unknown how the disease comes about, but she can't rule out the diagnosis that I received from the movement disorder neurologist who diagnosed me with a functional brain disorder. When I have had trouble walking, I started with using a heavy footed foot of cane. When I couldn't use it because of the pain in my hands and I'm right handed, I was prescribed a dry rollator walker, which was nice because I had storage in the seat. And then my feet gave out and I fell a few times on top of my walker. In the meantime, I switched primary care doctors to one who's closer to me where I now work. And he sent me to a neurologist who told me I had loss of sensation in my feet. Sometimes it hurts, sometimes they are numb and cold. He told me if I didn't want to fall down, I shouldn't stand up. Needless to say, I didn't go back to him. During the 19 years, I raised three of my sons. I raised three of my sons who are now grown up and do their best to help me. I suffer from mental health issues of depression, anxiety, and PTSD with occasional panic attacks. I suffer fis physical issues where I will fall if my feet give up. I have lost a lot of my independence and I stopped driving in, some, in 2019, something I knew I had to do. My son, William, started to go fund me a while back and raise money so I could get a mobility scooter and that worked. Then I bought myself a manual wheelchair until I could save from an electric wheelchair. It's not the best of chairs, but it's what I have. There are too many obstacles to go through to get insurance to pay for them, so I saved when I could. I always use my wheelchair so that when I go out. Sometimes I can walk around my apartment that I show with two of my sons and my son's fiance. We are roommates, but I feel like I live with them instead of the other way around. Anyway, with me using a wheelchair, I see things from a new perspective. Last year, I notified my apartment complex management and let them know that sidewalk ramps were dangerous. In June, still not being fixed, my wheelchair's wheels got stuck and I fell the chair landing on top of me. I am awaiting for the insurance company to contact me. Just a note, they did and they are working on my case. That's all I know. As a passenger, I make notes of sidewalks so I know where I am. Can and can go safely um, in either my scooter or my chair. I had to stop driving in 2018, and now I have to rely on family or medical transportation to go where I need to go with my ability, scooter, or walker thing going. I live in Malton, New York, and the main road is Route 9. There are sidewalks in some places, not in others, and some of the ramps are damaged. I know which stores I can shop in and determine if I need to use my wheelchair. Not ideal for going shopping or if my scooter will be able to fit. I have started a video series on YouTube and I'm going through the do's and don'ts and where accessibility is limited. Here are my thoughts on changes that need to be made. I read the over 400 pages of the American Disabilities Act that was last updated in 2010. The definition of mobility impaired accessible should be defined and not vague. Just because something is designated as accessible doesn't mean it is easily accessible. To be mobility impaired accessible, these are handicapped parking spots, an elevator or lift when there are stairs, and doors that can be automatically opened with or 
or with the push of the button. If the doors require security access, the person's security access would also unlock the building or have the door open automatically. And I put a link in for my petition to sign. Also, require buildings, public buildings, facilities, apartment complex to be mobility and very easily accessible. Having accessible parking accessible parking spots should have non-parking areas on both sides of the parking spots indicated with the blue stripes. So mobility impaired drivers or passengers may use mobility aids, especially wheelchairs or walkers can get in and out of the car. Many times there are spaces between the two spots, but not on each side of the parking spot. And if a mobility impaired person needs assistance and the side they need to get in and out, it's not easily accessible. Many handicapped spots they're closer to the building with curbs, sidewalks, or some type of landscape, making it difficult to get out of the car on that side of the parking spot. Ramps and sidewalks. Ramps that slope so persons do not have to use a step, such as a sidewalk, should be flush with the pavement so it is almost seamless. Any gaps between the pavement and the sidewalk cause injury to a person when using a mobility aid. Ramps that are broken or below or above the regular sidewalk need to be repaired as they pose a danger to those who are mobility impaired and even those who are not. It should be decided who is responsible for the sidewalk and ramps depending on the location of the ramps and sidewalks. Some sidewalks, depending on location, are the town's responsibility and others are the company's responsibility. Businesses within a plaza it should be determined if the sidewalks and ramps are the company who owns the plaza itself or if the individual shops are responsible for those in front of their building or their business, excuse me. Same goes for sidewalks and ramps in front of a person's residences. So apartment, townhouse, condos, and residential complexes sidewalks should be the responsibility of the company who owns the property. If the individual property is owned by the resident and is the responsibility of the owner of the property, and if there is a sidewalk, or ramp connected to their property. Safe exits in case of emergency. If a person is mobility impaired in the building, they are in the small book rooms. In case of emergency, such as fire, elevators cannot be used, and the only exit strategy is stairs. There should be some type of non-closure lift that can be used with both a manual or an automatic use that doesn't use electricity. Can you imagine you're in a wheelchair and you're trying to go down uh, four flights of stairs because your building is on fire. I live on the fourth floor of, of my apartment building and I have to use the elevators and can it use the stairs. And if I had an emergency, my son would have to get a fireman to come up and carry me all the way down the stairs while he, he carries my wheelchair down the stairs. So that was something that we had discussed in case, you know, what happens, you never know. Uh, public stores, corporations, or privately owned brands should be accessible with an automatic door or button that opens the door on both entrance and exit. Stores should not have display cases in front of the entrance as users who can maneuver around in a wheelchair or some type of mobility aid like a walker or a scooter. A note that in a chair, it is easier to enter or exit a door if the door pushes out rather than having to pull the door open and then when you go around it. Sometimes I use my legs to do this, but if I was paralyzed, I would not be able to do it. Note, the average cost to make a door automatic is around $3,000. On Amazon, just an example, I could buy a handicap button, the type you press to open the door when you're mobility impaired in many doctor's office studies for only $199. My uh, video series, and I put the link, and I will be doing more videos in my journey around where I live and the good points and bad points of areas where anyone, no matter if they have a disability or not, be able to access. And I have sent several letters to government officials and disability advocates. And some have responded, some have yet to respond, but I have been sending them periodically. I have also been taking photos of areas that are in danger to anyone walking on the sidewalk or trying to access sidewalks. I live in Malta and I let the sidewalks take me and my mobility scooter as far as they will go. And this includes public areas and public access. I am also sending letters to businesses in the area, especially the larger chain businesses, which can afford to make modifications in order to welcome any person, no matter how they can or cannot walk. Thank you for your time, Katie Shane. So this 
is I am sending these letters out the three envelopes I have they will be going out in mailbox tomorrow um to see with that what happens so that will be very interesting um I'm, um as soon as I feel up to it and probably within the next week or so I will be doing more research and looking at the larger chain restaurants starting with the first and also federal buildings because I have noticed that uh, there are two post offices that I know of that have accessibility, but the doors you still have to open yourself. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to kind of investigate a little bit more and look also look at federally operated businesses, county businesses, or uh, county run facilities, state run facilities, federal run facilities as well. Um, if you know of places that are hard to get into because you or someone you know has to use a mobility aid and it, it could be a walker or crutches because you have a broken leg um, or you have to use some sort of crutches to, to get around. Um, it could be temporary or permanent. Wheelchair. Mobility scooter, mobility scooters are awesome and I'm serious. I love my mobility scooter and they have so many different kinds. There's literally one that looks like a tank. And my son said that if anyone could pull it off, they would be. <laughs> no, not buying a tank, but I thought that was pretty cool. Um, you would be surprised on how creative some people are at creating these wonderful mobility scooters. Uh, my intention is to, when I can, is to get a better electric wheelchair. Um, something because my wheelchair, um, it's great to get, to get around, except the it has a weight distribution issue. So if I go up a little slant, I have to lean forward to adjust for weight. Um, so while it is a great chair and I use it every single day, um, you know, it, it's not, it's not perfect. Um, but I tell you, I would have rather have this one follow me like you did than a heavier, like manual wheelchair. That would have been a disaster for me. So, anyways, this has been uh, A.B. Shannon, uh, Exposed, Mobility Impaired, Access Denied, and uh, I will continue being an advocate, and if, if you want your voice heard, you can comment, you can email me, you can email me at writer amy shannon at gmail.com um, you can comment and post you can comment on facebook you can direct message me on facebook the link for my facebook page is on the front page of the youtube channel at the top and there's links and stuff in there so um yeah if you have something to say something to share i think it I'd be happy to have you tell talk to me. Um, heck, you could you could be a guest and, and talk about your um, your ideas or your thoughts. I would love that. So, again, this has been Amy Shannon. I hope you all be safe, be well, be as independent as you possibly can. So that is my purpose make you independent and myself. So thank you very much. See you next time.